Okay, first step in removing the dash and the gauge cluster is popping out the two side panels. This one's popped out. You just reach under with something uh, like a tongue depressor, pop it out, and then slide them out. They're a little tricky to pop out, and you're going to have to unhook the, uh, the wiring to the, the mirror folding. both sides, pop that one, pop this one, and uh, they separate in the middle, and back in a second. Okay, this is what the panels look like on the back, they have little push clips, and in the center that's where they join to each other. This one joins onto the other one in the center, and they just push into little slots in the dashboard. You'll probably have to move your steering wheel all the way down to get them off. And now to remove the bezel around this plastic piece. around the gauge cluster. See there's a little clip here, this little pin. Pick it up and push uh, in on that and pull, or sorry, pull out on that and pull down. Just kind of tough to do with one hand. But I can't really set up a tripod in here. So you can see all this. One on each side. Push up and pull down. So now once that's loose, rotate it up in. Okay, which way is it? Damn, come on, steering wheel. Lock it down. Hold on a second. I'm lock the steering wheel down. Okay, so once the bezel's off, you're going to remove the little plastic, see that little plastic screw? There's two on the top, one on each side. Just remove those with a um, flat-headed screwdriver. And then there's two bolts down there. I think they're six mil. can't remember. It might be eight. Seven. It's a seven mil. Two seven millimeter bolts, one on each side, one there and one over there, and the two flat headed screws on the top. We'll do that and be back in two seconds. Okay, so this is what the little top screw looks like here, the little plastic one with a little expansion sleeve on it. So you just unscrew that and then pull it out. You don't need to unscrew it all the way. And then the side bolt, the seven mil, just like that. out to the left. I can't remember which way is the best. I don't have my camera with my tripod set up so I'm going to have to do this holding the camera. Obviously put the tilt on it so you can get the wheel as far down as possible. One connector on the back, if I remember correctly, just one. Can I reach in here and get it? I can't get it yet. Um, okay, give me one second. I can't remember which way left or right to pull it out. I'm just going to be wasting time with one hand. So let me two hand this and uh, I'll tell you which way. I can't remember left or right. I think it came out to the right. I'm pretty sure that you rotated up into the right. But uh, I work on so many things, I can't remember from day to day which one went which way. Back in one second. Okay, just as I stopped that, I remembered. Rotate down toward you. Then you can disengage the plastic connector on the back and slide out once you've rotated the top down. You can see, sorry, the connector there. 
push in. There's a little tab. Push the tab in. Slide the lock tin back. And pull the whole connection off. And now this whole thing comes out. And turn this turn the steering wheel down as you're pulling it out to the right. Okay. And now we're looking at the back and the uh, the ones for illumination are the two big ones here and here. I believe they're T10s, but I'll know in two seconds. And then the other two illumination ones are for gauge illumination. Should be the two far right and the far left. So the two outer ones, which are a T5, I think. These two up here are turn signal. So the two are, four we're going to be replacing for gauges are these two and these outer two. The two big ones in the middle and the ones to the extreme outer left and right. If you want to do your gauge, um, your LCD displays like the, the trip computer and the mileage and stuff, uh, or sorry, the time and everything. It's those three right there. That one, that one, and that one. The three that are alone. See, they sit alone there. Not not the bottom row. That's all the idiot lights. But the three above those are the light colors that illuminate the uh, LCD display on your dashboard. So if you want to change the colors for those, those are the three to do. Um, I'll pull those up in two seconds and let you know which bulbs you need. Okay, so here we are part way through making these LEDs into blue. It's light outside, so it's kind of hard to see. Well, you can see that they're blue. Uh, obviously, the temperatures are the same. So I've done half. You can see where it splits in the middle. I've done the one T10. Uh, used. Uh, where's the bulb I used? I used one of these. A T10 is a 10 millimeter at the base. It's 10 millimeters from side to side. That width is 10 millimeters. It's a T10. And that matches up with the stock bulb, which is, I think, called a 194. Just have to make sure the little tabs there are bent to the sides so that they make connection. And again, with an LED, it's directional. Uh, the electricity flows only in one direction through an LED. It's a diode. Electricity flows one way. If you put it in and it doesn't work, rotate it 180 degrees and put it in again. Uh, it has to get positive and negative. It can't. A, a regular bulb can take positive and negative from either side and it will still work. It just has to flow through. A diode has to take positive on one side, not the other. So you just stick them in, test them. If they don't work, turn it 180 degrees, stick it in, do it again. Um, the other side is a one of the smaller T5 bases. This is an old base I've got here. It's missing one of the little clips, but I'll show you in two seconds how to uh, how to alter this and put a T5 bulb in. And a T5, like a T10, is five millimeters across. It's half the side, half the width across of a T10. So there's a five millimeter. That's a T5, five millimeters across the base from side to side. And this is the type I'm using. It's got an SMD chip in it. It's blue and it matches up with, you know, the other SMD blue one. Sometimes you'll have different shades of blue. So it's just kind of the luck of the draw. And I will put in the description, the link on eBay to pick them up. Um, although you can find them very easily. T5, the smaller ones, T10 are the big ones on the back of your speedometer or your gauge cluster. There's only two T10s. That's the two for the, the big ones that light up most of the gauge cluster here and here. Everything else in the back is a T5 bulb. So if you want to replace anything else, um, you're going to be needing a ton of T5 bulbs. I wouldn't recommend replacing the little idiot lights. It's kind of, you'd need a whole different ton of colors. Can't put white LEDs behind a red um, because most of these just have a, a bulb and then there's like a little plastic, colored plastic thingy that changes the color. That's what it shows up as. So your turn signal will have a green piece of plastic in front of the bulb that will light up green. If you put white behind there, 
uh, that white will wash that out and that will look almost white that green will look almost white same with any other color if you put a white ball LED bulb behind a red um, uh, one of the red behind that one which is shows kind of orange on the camera but it's red if you put the uh, a white LED behind that it'll show up as pink so if you wanted to replace all of these you'd have to use the same color at T5 LED behind each one of those uh, these uh, LCD displays whatever color you put back there that's the color that's going to show up on the little numbers so if I put a blue one back there then the numbers the minus 38 Celsius minus 38 Wow <laughs> it's not quite that cold out right now um, minus 38 would show up as uh, in blue and uh, if you put a red one it would show up in red um, anyway so I'm gonna I'll, I'll stop this video and I'm gonna get another bulb socket I've got one somewhere and I'll show you how to convert this is pretty simple okay so here's one of the bulbs out of the dashboard and it's got two little connector feet on the side that go in the slots and turn and it's got a bulb but that bulb is attached by a wire uh, by the wires on each side to these metal feet on both sides and I'm simply going to uh, pry these little metal tabs up stick a screwdriver under that metal tab and push it up and it's gonna come out on the bulb and I'll show you that in two seconds because again I don't have a tripod today and uh, I'm having to film on my phone so I'll pop this out and show you what it looks like in two seconds okay so here it is I've pushed up the little metal tabs hold the base sorry dirty fingers working on crap and you see the two little metal pins on the side and they're attached to the wires so you're just gonna break the wires off the pins and slide the pins back inside you can see there that there's two little slots one on the top and one on the bottom there's two little slots above those V's that's where the pin is gonna slide into so I'm gonna break those two off and I'll show you the pin slid back in hold on one second okay so I've broken this one pin off and slid it back in that little slot you see at the bottom there's a slot at the top there's the same slot for it and it will just simply push back down in and lock in place so I'll break off the other one push that one in and be back in one second okay so the second one is pushed in now and you see on the bottom the little yeah down it goes one second focus you see on the bottom of the silver connector how that little piece has kind of got a gap between it and the plastic you want to make sure that gap is there so it'll make good connection once it gets inside on the circuit board and now we're essentially just going to take our t5 and stick it in there i'll grab one right now So here's a T5 bulb, and I'm going to push the two metal tabs to the outer sides. The two little metal legs, I want those on the outside. This is very hard to do with one hand. Anyway, I'll bend them over and I'll show you in two seconds. It's going to just take me a second. Okay, so now the two little legs are on the outside, and then we're merely going to push that in the socket let's see if I can do this with one hand ah. okay and since I don't want to push down on that SMD chip on the top I'm gonna to grab the little blue shaft here with a pair of pliers and push it straight back in to lock push it down to lock it in it needs to go in about another half a centimeter back in two seconds Okay, so now it's locked in place, and I just merely have to stick this into the outer, um, the outer socket on the uh, on this side, the outer one that I showed you before, uh, and I'll put that one in. And hopefully, the first time I put it in, I've got the gauge cluster hooked up. You might not be comfortable with that. I've got the car running because it's it ain't minus thirty eight, but it is cold out. Um, that's just because I hooked up the gauge cluster with the car running. Once I turn the car off and turn it back on. It should be set to the proper temperature. <laughs> the 
least I think it will. I don't know why it's not right now. Oh well. Um, once I unhook the gauge cluster with the car off and hook it back in, everything will be fine. Anyway, so I'm just gonna, I don't know if I can do this. Get hooked up. Ugh. And the one side is easy enough because that wire on the back that leads to it is not long enough. So I'm gonna have to unhook it, put the, uh, the bulb in, and then be back in a second. I'll show you the T10. Actually, with it running, I might be able to do this. <laughs> so I'm gonna reach in and grab that old bulb out with the six millimeter. Oop, dropped it. Six millimeter socket. And I don't know where I just put the bulb I just made. There it is. And hopefully I get this the first time around. Turn, yes, first time. Okay. It's light, so it's hard to see, but did get it the first time. So now we're just gonna do the T10 bulb. And that is simply a pair of pliers. The two big ones on the back are both T10s. Turn and pull it out. Pull this bulb out. Hopefully it's not burning me. I need two hands to pull this sucker out because it's probably been in there forever. I'm going to stick that other, what is that, a 12 watt bulb? 12 volt, 5 watt, sorry, 5 watt bulb. And I'm going to stick the other LED in there and I'll be back in one second. And there's the T10 LED in the socket. This one doesn't have to be altered at all. The bulb just pulls out and this one pushes back in. You don't have to pull these little fingers off. I'm just gonna simply put it in and see if it uh, if it turns blue. Um, you've seen me pull it out. I'm just gonna. It's kind of hard to hold the camera and see where I'm going with a pair of vice grip or uh, needle nose pliers behind my gauge cluster. So let me put this one in. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so there's all four in. Gauges are now blue. Pretty easy to do. I'll change the color of one of the LCD displays in the back just to show you um, what kind of weird T5 do I have. Um, I have a red, a white, a yellow. Let me find one in uh, a different color than what it is now, and I'll be back in a second just to show you. And just for giggles, that's what a red LED would look like behind the temperature gauge. Anyway, uh, hope any of this helps. If you have any questions, leave them in the box below. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whichever you want. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, any comments, any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching. Okay, one quick hint when putting the uh, the dash back together, I've screwed the gauge cluster in. And now I'm just gonna get this bezel and it just simply, once you get it in place, underneath the two sides, it slides up and snaps in place, those two clips. Let me just do this one, this one's easier for me to show you, I think. Slides up on both sides and snaps into place. And that's it. For the gauge surround. There's two little holes it goes into in the top. Ugh, I missed that one. And there's two little holes. There's one there. That's going to slide up into. And one on the other side. These two little pins right here slide up in those two little slots and it slots in from the bottom, just pushes up in. And I'm probably gonna need two hands to guide that up into there. But other than that, we're all done. Thanks for watching. Okay, so everything's snapped back together, and that's what the gauges now look like. I put the white back in the uh I don't know, I just like the contrast of them being a different color. I don't know why. Anyway, thanks for watching.